President Trump is on the first leg of his overseas trip today and his administration struggles with controversies back home. The president was greeted by King Salman of Saudi Arabia upon his arrival today in Riyadh. The purpose of the visit is to strengthen the alliance between the two countries. Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, he is traveling with the president. Growing partnership is really grounded in trust. Trust between our two nations that we are pursuing the same objectives. But the core of our expanding relationship really are our shared security interests. America's security at home is strengthened when Saudi Arabia's security is strong as well. And the United States of America, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, are embarking on a number of new initiatives to counter violent extremist messaging, as you just heard uh, Foreign Minister Jaber describe. We're also going to be pursuing new approaches to disrupting financing of terrorism and advancing defense cooperation. But first, our Margaret Brennan is traveling with the president in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Margaret, we know Secretary Tillerson addressed several of these new arms deals. We know President Obama also had provided an arms deal with Saudi Arabia. How are they different, Margaret, and what can you tell us about this deal? Well, Saudi Arabia is and always has been the largest purchaser of weapons when it comes to American-made arms, both during the Obama and during the Trump administration. This package, though, uh, is really seen as symbolic of the Trump administration trying to repair a relationship that was badly damaged during the Obama era because of that outreach to Iran to broker the nuclear deal, but also uh, the Obama administration not uh, more uh, strongly backing uh, Egypt's then embattled president back during the Arab Spring and then also not taking action in Syria. So there's a lot of frustration here in the kingdom and you saw the absolute opposite of that today. This was a warm, warm welcome even before any of these deals had been announced uh, as soon as President Trump stepped off that plane. And then from Secretary Tillerson, we heard him lay out uh, the justification for that really significant $110 billion arms package saying that this is about building up security here against the threat from Iran. The repeated reference to Iran really part of that drawing that distinction between the Trump and the Obama administration. And you also heard Rex Tillerson justify this in terms of helping to build up um, the pushback against any kind of terror threat, whether it's through weaponry or through, whether it's through social media, really trying to, in many ways, renew a relationship that during the campaign campaign, uh, President, then candidate Trump perhaps damaged when speaking in uh, speaking about Islam being an enemy, speaking about a potential Muslim ban. Now as president, he is reaching out to Saudi Arabia, which is uh, the, the birthplace of Islam. And as you hear repeatedly them refer to this as a custodian of the two holy mosques. The reason they're doing that is to really show uh, that the president Trump is rebuilding any kind of frayed relations that might have been um, incurred during that campaign. And Margaret, when you talk about frayed relations, they also address the fighting in Syria and in Yemen and putting the pressure on Iran, a country that had elections today. So as they strengthen this alliance with Saudi Arabia, what do you think it means for Iran, Margaret? Well, it's not clear. We actually got some really interesting news from Secretary Tillerson during that brief press uh, uh, availability he had, he said he wouldn't hang up the phone. He'd take a call from Iran's foreign minister. He'd speak with him and says he likely will do that in the future. That's the first time we've heard the Trump administration say that diplomacy with Iran is an option here. Up to this point, they've really emphasized this hard line approach of pushing back militarily uh, against uh, the terror groups that are backed by Iran, Hezbollah and others, as well as uh, on the battlefield in places like, as you heard, the Saudi foreign minister point out, even in uh, Afghanistan where U.S. troops are, are on the ground that they are alleging Iran is behind some meddling there. Uh, so that was really interesting to have Secretary Tillerson say, wait, well, there may be some room for diplomacy as we continue to review whether or not to stick by this nuclear deal uh, negotiated uh, in the Obama era that the Trump administration has inherited. So they have to come to a final agreement if they're going to honor it or not. That was really interesting. Um, in terms of what you heard about that arms package, oh, a lot of that also has to do with the war in Yemen and Iran's influence there. Iran has been uh, supporting through arms and through some political support group of rebels that has uh, been embattled in a war having overthrown the government in Yemen, which Saudi Arabia feels very threatened by because of their shared border. So this continued um, 
uh, provision of weaponry and specifically precision, precision guided munitions is really supposed to help them. And Saudi Arabia sees this as uh, really strengthening their hand against Iran because that's the prism through which they view this war in Yemen, which is also more complicated because it's a, a civil war and the U.S. is trying to get them back to the negotiating table. So that's how Secretary Tillerson justified this and really sort of tried to connect those dots in saying that the weapons are going to help us get to diplomacy. Yeah, definitely a fascinating deal that they struck there. Margaret, I want to ask you about the president. He's also giving a speech. What do we expect him to say? Well, President Trump will deliver that speech tomorrow, and this is really his sort of coming out party to the Arab and Muslim world. He will not only meet with the Saudi king as he did today, but he'll meet with a number of uh, leaders of Arab and Muslim majority countries, uh, more than 30 from what we have heard. We don't have the exact list of who he's going to chat with and shake hands with, but you can expect him to speak to uh, Egypt's President Sisi, others who he has really tried to welcome with open arms. Uh, so this is President Trump saying, now that I'm in office, I view things perhaps a bit differently. Uh, I don't view Islam as the enemy. He's going to try to show that he understands the distinction uh, between uh, the kind of radical extremism that he has been, uh, you know, full-throated in his uh, pledge to fight versus allying closely with uh, Muslim countries who are battling these terror groups themselves, Saudi Arabia being one of them. Our Margaret Brennan traveling with the president in Saudi Arabia. Margaret, thank you.